bring it up to the 21st century, uh, I have Declan O'Rourke along, all along the western seaboard. Um, this is part of a concept album that he had written uh, just in regards, uh, just about stories about the Irish famine. Um, it came out about four years ago or so. Um, but this was a standout track for me anyway. Uh, I first heard it when I was driving back from Inniskillen. Uh, I was, I still haven't actually got my driving test, but I was practicing and Lynette Faye's folk music show was on the radio and uh, so I was just listening away and then this one song just started off with a lovely little pluck of harps and then uh, the, then you know the uh, squeeze box comes in and the uh, and just builds up on this traditional arrangement of in instruments including the acoustic guitar um, and then his voice comes in just describing the bleak and insufferable hopelessness that was the experience of people on the western seaboard. Um, there's nothing for them to eat except uh, chicken feet and sand, uh, even though their hands are toiling on the land, um, while Britannia rules the waves. You know, that they, they it's not, you know, it's not a, it's not a major revelation to say that Britain was exporting, you know, mass, mass quantities of industrial quantities of food, uh, while, you know, literally stepping over the dead bodies of starving children in order to export it. Um, so it's not a major revelation, but it is, it is good to remind people, and it's just, it's a lovely song, brilliantly written. Um, you know, from start to finish, every every note, every choice of the arrangement is just exactly what it needs to be. And they did a very good live version in the Ulster Hall with a full orchestra um, a few years ago as well. My next favourite, um, no Gaelic, Irish, well, possibly claimed by Scotland maybe as well, but uh, it's the Parting Glass. And um, the Parting Glass, uh, as the title says, it was sort of a the last bit of hospitality offered to guests before they headed off on their journey and um, that was to fortify them for their travels. So you had a parting glass and uh, that's a tradition I think that uh, goes on in plenty of countries but um, it has the roots of the song I think go back to about 1600 and um, you were being hospitable, you would give your guest a little drop of punch or whatever to keep them fortified. Um, there's um, a version in Scotland um, called Armstrong's Farewell, and that was, uh, I think, more or less the same air, and I suppose the two songs merge into one. Um, that was that the take on that was. Um, he was going to the gallows to be executed for murder, and I think I'll stick with my uh, my wee version of the parting glass as you give somebody their final farewell. And um, yeah, it's just quite a nice song. I first heard it at a concert way back years ago in I think it was Sligo. It was Tommy Macon and the Tommy Macon. Clancy Brothers, well it was Tommy Macon basically, and he sang, ended off the concert and gave a little story about, he, every song he sang he sort of gave a wee introduction to, and uh, when the concert was ending he sang the parting glass, and that was the first time I've heard it, and from there on in I liked it. Ronnie Drew and the Dubliners, they actually sang it as well, and Ronnie Drew's gravelly voice lent itself to the song. Yeah, well there was a concert when President Higgins went over to um, London, the London Irish, I think, ended off their concert by singing The Parting Glass. There was a big massive concert in the Albert Hall and all the diaspora were there and uh, all the talent of Ireland was there and I think they all sort of sang it and again I thought that was a very, that was very fitting. The next song is uh, it's another Irish language song in, in Gaelic called Tranona Bug Area, which means uh, uh, yesterday, last yesterday evening, a little 
yes, a bug is small, but Trinona bugarea. It uh, was written quite recently, I would think probably the 60s or so, by one of the Magriana brothers. Um, I first heard it, um, I've, I've been to the Donegal Gale talk as an adult uh, to brush up my Irish. And so I went three years, uh, uh, three years consecutive years, and we first heard it by a lady, and uh, forgive me, but I forget her name, but she was a beautiful singer. I've seen her since in TG Cahar. Uh, she sang that, which she was brought into one of our, of our classes and sang that song, and it was absolutely beautiful. Um, and in our Irish choir, again, our Irish singing choir here in Oma, uh, na Homi, we have learned it. Uh, it's quite difficult to learn. The Irish in it is beautiful. It's about our regretted love again, the saddest time on the man's side. Uh, but it's a lament and a beautiful, beautiful air. Uh, I've recently come across a recording of it by Albert Frey. Um, he's a Belfast Gaelgar and singer and uh, I love his version. And yes, uh, that's the one I would listen to mostly. I've heard it on TG Cahar again a few times in, in, in random uh, programmes and that, but uh, wouldn't hear it all that much outside of that, and um, except for Albert Fry's recording, which I'll play now and again. But a beautiful song, a beautiful air. And the last one? So the last one is <laughs> getting away from all that commenting and uh, unrequited love and all that sort of thing. And it's a beautiful, beautiful it's a little gem. Uh, and it's called um, The Dance in the Flickering Light. Uh, I've heard it by Christy Moore at a concert and now I have it on a record and you will hear it an odd time on the radio. Beautiful little thing, song, but apparently it was written by a, a man called Gallagher and Christy says on, on one of his, uh, at one of his concerts actually he did say um, he first heard it sang by the, the, the writer, the author, in Los Angeles in 1984. And it starts off as I was coming home one night um, and then he goes into this imagination about insects and flowers and little animals and how they have this keely and it is just a gem. The words are brilliant. Um, and you start to think to yourself, was he drunk? Was he on a high? Was he tipsy and happy in it? But it's a lovely, a beautiful insight into what probably maybe has gone on in the animal world that we're not even aware of. It's a beautiful wee song and a gem in my opinion. The next song I want to talk about is Luke Kelly. It's a Luke Kelly song. Uh, um, and you know, anybody that knows anything about Irish music will know that Luke Kelly was an absolute unique um, presence and had such a, even a unique sort of, um, he was larger than life and he had his big big red beard and curly hair and he just sang with such passion and, and empathy and um, anytime you listen to any of his songs like you really really can feel feel the emotions of, of the songs that he sings and you know and, and what he's singing about. Um, song for Ireland is a beautiful song. Really 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 love that song um, and again it gives me goose pimples in a ray hear it you know just the way he sings it and so there's no one else comes close to him except Dan McCabe and um, that that young fella is phenomenal you know he is also very very talented and obviously he's um he's singing in the style of Luke Kelly but Luke Kelly wasn't singing in the style of anyone Luke Kelly was Luke Kelly so he he is the original and best and um, unfortunately we didn't get to we didn't get him for too long because he died very young but um, some of the some of his, some of the songs that he sang, you know, he really didn't just pick a song. Every single song that he had was so deep and meaningful. Like I mean, there's another one, "Score Not His Simplicity." What a song! What an amazing, amazing song! You know, and and the empathy that's in that song, and and the, the, the feelings of all the families that you know about a little song. It's, it's brilliant. Like it's just such such artistry really um, and I think a lot of that's missing in today's thing we, we, we don't realize how enriched I mean uh, possibly a lot of other countries have their own um, folk music and folk songs and, and yes of course they do um, we just are very blessed because you know the songs and the music and the poems and the stories you know
know there's so much out there and uh, we're very blessed. And to finish off my five, again I'm going to say in the 21st century, it's a song by Emma Langford. It's actually only came out uh, last year, 2020, I believe. Um, so, uh, so it's going to be the most modern song on the list, but hopefully that will, as the list grows, we'll get a few more Emma choices. Bird Song by Emma Langford and several other artists uh, who she invited along, but uh, Emma Langford is usually listed as the lead artist. Um, uh, it's called Bird Song, and it's. Uh, it's very Enya in that it's 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 very uh, clannad, very um, ethereal Celtic mysticism type sound to it. Um, but they, they and they invoke that by just having you know a lot of vocal harmonies be the rhythm section and and just that there's a lovely a lovely um, refrain to your eyes find uh, you know, it's a, it's a great refrain, um, wonderfully um, wonderfully executed throughout, and the four vocalists, I didn't actually realise there were four vocalists when I first heard it, but they all do complement each other very well. And then uh, she uses Irish dancing as a sort of rhythm at the end, uh, and if you marry that to Denise Chyla uh, with her uh, Cliffs of Moor uh, during the, just there at the start of the year, I think there is a massive there is a massive on tap potential for Irish hip hop to start using traditional sounds and samples as their beats. And if I was talented enough as a DJ, I would have done it about five years ago because I've had this idea for fucking years and I just don't have the connections or the or the talent to do it myself. But hopefully we'll see a lot more of that because as I said there's a totally on top potential there. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, Bird Song. And again I am aware that Four of my five songs are very, very slow, so it's not really going to set the party on fire on Paddy's Day. Um, but as I said, we are going to continue to uh, add to this, and we are looking for contributors. So stick around, and you'll find out how to get in touch with us. Uh, we don't really do Facebook, and we don't really do any other means of uh, communication. But if you stick around, we will uh, we will show you how you can get in touch. We want to hear your favorite Irish songs are.